the bottom gradually to the top. Now we only have one butt left still. I hope you can see it. Let me focus on that. You see that? Okay. So I'm going to paint another one uh, with a Chinese brush painting. Okay. This is my plein air <laughs> watercolor painting easel. Uh, actually, I you know I use this one, but this uh, whiteboard is convenient. I can use my magnetics. Here is another board. I just rubbed a uh, regular canvas with uh, uh, felt. It was made for painting T-shirts. If you have seen my early YouTube, you, you see I use it. So I just use that as a rack. Okay, <clears throat> I have many demands of uh, or questions about uh, uh, using my uh, rig, uh, new uh, designed three stem brush. Here is one. The other one is. Uh, white. We have brown and white. Uh, I got some other samples with the same, uh, similar from Japan and from China. This is my own design. I improved it. Uh, so the handle is uh, uh, very long and I can feel the weight of the brush on the, on the, on the, hand, on the uh, head. So I will soak the brush first soak the brush first any any brush before you use it soak it right I will use the convenient ink cake in this case um, this is the raw or unsized uh, single shawn paper with a antique gray you, do, you may not see it on the camera but it is a little toned uh, okay so for the leaf, we'll just use ink. I could use uh, you know green or, or yellow like I did on the watercolor, but uh, the brush pa uh, Chinese uh, sumi painting, we just keep it uh, simple. Typically, leaf uh, in ink and the flower in color. This this uh, orchid is very fragrant. Besides the this the color is very colorful. It's a uh, uh, light pink color with a little yellow tone with li uh, detailed uh, like parallel veins on it on the head. It's very nice. <coughs> so I just use uh, ink. When we paint the orchid, okay, the idea is to divide the paper into white space, different shapes of white. We call that uh, negative space in Western painting, right? But we don't. Uh, do it in an um, abstract uh, approach because we have to still uh, restrain, uh, you know, be uh, con uh, concerned with the, the growth of the nature of the plant. Um, because the blade is kind of flat, so I use a flat brush. So you, uh, if I use the side, I can do a narrow line. When I, when I turn, I, I make it. Uh, uh, Broader, and uh, I have lots of uh, uh, people paint, who paint watercolor uh, ask me where uh, they can get a flat, flat uh, Chinese brush. Actually, you know, most of the Chinese brush look like this, a pointed tip, not flat tip. But you can kind of squeeze it to, to uh, shape it, to make it. Uh, this is a bamboo orchid brush or mountain horse brush. I used to before. And we do have a flat brush like this. This is a, uh, this is a hacky brush, uh, Japanese hacky brush, Chinese, uh, it's a Chinese hacky brush. The name is from Japan. Uh, we call it uh, the flat brush or the uh, background brush, actually. Uh, this is flat, but uh, you see this is too short. And uh, um, the, uh, Handle just don't feel the you know 
you cannot twist it. It's flat. That's why we um, improve it, make it longer, and make it. Uh, it's a, it's a three com uh, brush combined, uh, three stems of a regular brush, con con with, uh, form a seamless uh, flat head. You will see. Uh, so I'll start from this uh, this this tall leaf. You, you can I can start with from the the um, bottom and with the side of the brush. I, I have to sink the trace like that. So I I will make a bend. Uh, so maybe two strokes. So this is you can make up, make up a little bit. I, actually, it's not good idea, but you, if you know what you're doing, you can do that. And you can see, you can make up a little bit. Okay. And just keep dividing the space. So this divides the paper into two sides, right? Of heaven and earth. And you, you can uh, make another crossing. I, I like that band leaf right there. That echoes this. You can make that a little longer. And then I concentrate on the bottom part, try to make uh, uh, the bottom more dense. Okay. And the characteristic of this flower is has long uh, has younger leaf. Um, shoots or, or grows. So I would also make a, a, a young group. Like a that. There are several growths, like three of them, older growths. This is too parallel. But you, you can always break that with other leaves. Sometimes I just do the top first, and you can get uh, goes upside down. Okay. We can we can make a a crossing leaf. Just exaggerate one of the. So you don't have to uh, exactly uh, paint what you see, but uh, more important to organize the space on the paper. Okay, now I have to do this uh, other growths here, younger growths on the other. main growth and this orchid has a little uh, bulb, bulb you know, like a little onion I would say <laughs> just a little tiny tiny so we can we can indicate that okay then uh, we can use uh, the white brush soak it first I'll use a little color. We we'll just use the ink cake, uh, the color cake. We got some white, some uh, yellow. Um, that's for the base part, and then a uh, little bit uh, rouge. Japanese rouge is a little warmer. And we got some uh, carmine. Try not to use green, but you could. Okay, now I start to do the flowers. You can also start from the the stock. If you don't do the stock, you keep that in mind. Stock actually grow grow uh, directly from the, the root. So th there's another line. And 
Okay, so D is so basically um, you can use the corner to to the you know you can turn the brush easily to get the shape. The center is a bit darker. So I, you can also start from the outer three strokes like uh, like that, and then the center two strokes uh, for the and then the tongue. The top, that's it. And uh, so you can double load or multiple load. You can do the center first, and then do the. See, I got parallel lines, that's nice, just like the flower. Three big ones, and then the larger ones. I mean, the darker ones. Now I have to do some uh, butt, like, like this. Just use the corner of the brush. You have to hold the Chinese way so you can twist it easily. to count but if you count them there, there are seven on this one uh, don't exist uh, nine that's the maximum this one is only uh, seven so accenting the you can use smaller brush and this uh, Yuan Bonian uh, is my famous artist uh, he used a brush with combination brush but uh, with the soft center uh, stiff uh, outside. That's a different uh, kind of uh, arrangement than uh, structure than the normal combination brush with a thicker, uh, with a uh, stiff core. But this one has a different. You just dot the pony. You can use your fingertip to to shape the brush. Okay, and uh, someone asked if I can use the brush to do the the landscape. Uh, yes, I can do that. Maybe we just do a rock something. Uh, here, I don't want to do the pot, so you can just add, or you can just add some uh, moss dots. You can see how the uh, texture can go. Just lighten the ink and just get rid of some dark. So I just dot. You can get flying white or this kind of. Texture, you know, very easily. That's for the mouth. The, they grow on the uh, ground with uh, falling leaves like that. So you can indicate that moss, moss dots. Um, Maybe we can add another leaf. We can use a 
calligraphy to fill in that space. Look at that. And the pants. Very tall. Just the uh, um, experiment with this uh, new brush. Okay, I need to, uh, let's see if you have any questions and comments. to a half sheet You can start from the flower, maybe. Um, let's do that. Say I, I have my uh, because I can load different colors on different corners. You know, like uh, the top the one one side is white, the other is uh, um, pink. So I can rotate the corner to do the. Uh, if I need light, I just go to the left, and then I shift to the right. So I don't have to go back to the, uh, if I just do it parallel, you know, you will see a uh, gradation like this, see? This, this is a horizontal gradation. That's very, <laughs> very good. I, I can get that dark, uh, as if there's dark uh, shadow underneath it. So one stroke, one stroke. Try to do all the variations. You know, you get all the variations very nicely. You can paint wet into wet a little bit. Use the side ways to get the uh, narrows, narrow, narrow stroke. All right, that's for the flower. Let me save that brush. And then I can use this brown one to do the leaves. This time, let me just add a little green and uh, yellow, maybe on one side. Some ink, of course.
this uh, this flower has a very nice uh, leaf shape. It's, it's uh, narrowed in the in the uh, lower part, and then there's a very beautiful uh, top, very uh, blade shape. You can just add a few, uh, like split brush, you get hair or veins very easily with this. All right. One important difference between the Chinese brush painting and the watercolor is that you really cannot alter anything. Um, if, once you get onto the rice paper, on, on um, watercolor painting you can still blot it, you know, lifting uh, some some paint if you don't like it. But on this one, it's no regret, you know, no. Uh, no change after you have set it on the paper. There's no no way you can take it back. I can use a little white, maybe just to see uh, <laughs> to cover it a little bit. I want, but not too much. Try to combine the, the concept of the watercolor with a little uh, with the Chinese brush paint with you know, color. Hope you like it. Actually, uh, the time, the best time to, to paint, to smell the fragrance is if you paint or take a picture of it. So, um, and then you f you smell it. So good, um, very sweet smell. Okay, I double load the brush with the uh, yellow, green, and maybe some ink to the green. Right. 
Let's see if we can do another one. This time, let me start from this this uh, this side, so I can make that leave the left side leave. This is beautiful. This is really nice. Those who have studied the mustard must uh, notice the, the three strokes here. Actually, I can find them there in the model. And then this this really nice uh, star star leaf. And then the band leaf to the side. Younger leaves shoots with a very uh, colorful red in the, uh, near the, the brown, like a skin. This is the characteristic of this uh, Cymbidium insifolium, that's the name of the plant. And then just do a stock with a with the uh, uh, multi-flower spark, spark. And some red leaves kind of wrapping, wrapped wrap up the stem. Now that's back to the flower. So I, I can multiple load the, the brush with the yellow, some uh, white, and then the pink, different colors. Okay, now the flowers is the fun part. Right? Um, light, dark, alternating side. Just exaggerate the, the color. Get parallel veins in the and we, in one stroke. There's the flat brush is easy to get there. Do another cut. So no back and forth like watercolor uh, layers of the uh, washes so that it's a direct Palma, you know, one, one, one stroke approach. That's very true in, in Chinese brush painting. You can really get it. Palma. Okay. we got an idea of what this brush can do. Um, I think it's more um, likely to, you know, to do the, the uh, blades, a kind of shape. Uh, you can also paint a rectangular shape very easily, and uh, um, you can use the sides to get narrow lines. But for uh, landscape, I, I'm not sure. That for architecture, it's maybe very useful. 
urban urban landscape where it's for when you do the sky scrapers, you know, that this part here would be super to do the uh, urban landscape, I think. So if you're interested, go to Blue Heron Arts and you can get a set of uh, two for 85 uh, and you can buy them separately. Okay. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Happy summer, a happy autumn. Bye-bye.